episode of a technology review. We have a TP-Link Archer AX6000 here. Um, this is my standard or my, my stock router for my, for my home. And I think they are allow around 50 devices constantly connected to it via Wi-Fi. <clears throat> it's a super nice device. I use it for around one year in my new home, but before maybe half a year already in my in my old apartment and it's a Wi-Fi 6 router with uh, which is capable of um, 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz um, frequencies it's a router with eight antennas uh, and at that time it was the cheapest router available as Wi-Fi 6 in, in a Wi-Fi 6 version and until maybe Half a year ago, it did everything quite superb. So everything worked out. Our our shade, window shades worked with it. All the 20 Google Home uh, um, speakers worked with it constantly. Mobile phones worked with it. But since a few months, I'm, I'm realizing that I have some troubles with it. So um, I have to every three to three days to maybe 14 days in this kind of period i have to reset the device or, or restart the device constantly because it's still available the wi-fi is available you can connect to the wi-fi but there is no data coming in you can request whatever you want it's super slow super sluggish super laggy at this time it sometimes recovers by itself, but um, yeah, so this was my experience with it the last few months, months, um, and um, yeah, this is um, again a TP-Link Archer AX6000, and what I did right now, I started to figure out which my um, HDI A1, no, HTA2, um, thermal camera what's going on with it so some pictures follow later or maybe I will I will implement those in this video but um, I figured out that there are some components getting super hot with this uh, router what means super hot it's around 50 degrees and I think when these kind of components reach this kind of temperature threshold um, the router isn't stable anymore and get some some weird issues like I explained before so what I did today that's why um, I don't have internet at the moment I dismantled this router and started to find out um, how to um, make a teardown of this without making damage and this is what I came about I found a kind of um, manual, uh, I think it's from the FCC, uh, Federal Communications uh, uh, Corporation or whatever it's meant, meant uh, from the United States and they, they had a detailed, um, they had detailed or provided detailed pictures from the inside of the device. So there was not a teardown video available for it in detail. So I started to find out how to open it. From these pictures from the FCC, I realized that there are four mounting holes in these kind of areas of the device. Um, and when you turn it around, you will see that there are four, usually four, um, four rubber feet or whatever you call it, glued in with a, a double sticky tape in these kind of slots here, 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 here and here so what I did I get those out with a screwdriver and I found um, Philips hex uh, Philips uh, screws not hex screws but Philip uh, uh, cross screws below it I get those out but even with those out it's not uh, easily possible to to open the device so 
you really have to go on the edges here around here there are some kind of um, um, plastic parts inside there like a noses or, or however you want to call it and these are really uh, snapping in the upper device the cover the upper cover so when you're gently open those with a slot screwdriver then you can access the inside so you can lift this this whole piece up so there's only a really thin ribbon cable in there which is connected to let me see to this connector here and this connector is only there for the um, LED light which is hosted in this kind of part uh, on top on the on the top of the router it's not really necessary but it gives you a kind of an overview of the status is the router connected does it have internet uh, does the Wi-Fi work and so on yeah but this is only through some color codes happening so I open this up you can uh, snap this latch off and you can get uh, gently this cable out so don't destroy it because if you destroy this this ribbon cable or this, this flat cable um, your LED will or may not work anymore so as you can see there's a kind of a lot of slots in there to get uh, air ventilation in and out it depends on how you um, mount the router if you mount it top down then here the fresh air coming in getting heated up and going out from the back but if you mount it like this the hot air coming coming from the components and going out here but some people also mount it like uh, in a vertical state and um, especially on this kind of uh, thing we have to talk a lot uh, around uh, the construction of the device a little bit because I saw I, I really realized that there are some design flaws maybe uh, happening and um, this is something I want to um, go in detail right now. So <clears throat> if you get the if you get the top down or the top cover uh, dismantled, you will find something like this. So you have here the um, eight LAN ports plus the um, uh, one port. Then you have some um, passive. Uh, heat cooling from aluminium alloy inside here around this area and around this this area on the below side um on the below side there is nothing in there there are some some um metal covers but um i don't think they get so hot in here so um what i realized with my with my um thermal camera that the most uh thermal uh, um the most the most heat dissipating happens on the top side of this motherboard here you can see all the eight antennas so this is something which is not um super uh, interesting you have here um usb 3.0 port and the usb c port which i use at the moment and i can show you what i did with it um, give me a second for testing purposes to get this thing somehow actively cooled i installed a, a kind of a fan it's a i think a 60 by 60 millimeter fan a brushless one with um five volts and 0 0.18 amperes um this one i connected for testing purposes uh, of course to a usb port and this usb port I plugged in here into into the uh, sorry into the USB C port here. So as soon as I plug it in, the fan starts to spin, and it's not it's a super uh, low noise uh, fan. So you are not getting disturbed by the sound. Um, one thing I want to show you what I realized first. Usually you have here two these kind of two um. Uh, screw mounts you can you can put some screws into the ball and you can you can slap it in like that 
or in the opposite direction you can slide it in like that and it's getting mounted so the screw heads go into this position and then you cannot get it out only by lifting it up again what happens if you do this if you do this really in horizontal mode you can see these coolers or these cooling uh, um, units here from aluminum alloy they are oriented in this direction so what happens usually air hot air is going to the top side because it's getting lighter than a, than a cold air so air coming in getting heated up and it's going out like this the same on this one cold air coming in getting heated up and going out like this if you really mount it like like um vertical position then these mounting holes are quite in the wrong direction they should be like this in my opinion so if you mount it with the original holes like this the air cannot go out here so it's heating up itself so it's uh, quite there is not a real circulation happening within the device and then this part of this part gets even hotter so this is something i realized uh, already and uh, i can prove with my thermal imaging camera then okay this is something which is a problem but you can solve this if you know about the issue then there is another chip here it's a broadcom ethernet chip a broadcom um let me check bcm five three one three four and this is the um ethernet controlling chip for um these kind of ethernet ports so in case you use this as a router you have a modem coming in from there and you have maybe some hardwired uh, uh, computers going out from there so everything which happens comes from this chip this chip doesn't have any cooling no fan and no passive cooling and that's why this chip is the hottest piece of hardware in the whole unit when you use it so it's going up to 50 or 55 degrees i don't have a, a picture of this but um i saw some pictures that uh, i saw some i had some some measurements these days and this one is really 55 degrees uh, celsius or centigrade and um this is nothing to to um oversee so this one is really important for everything which going which coming in or out from hard wiring that's why I think about installing another passive cooling unit here to this one. Another thing is this one here, and I don't, oh, sorry, I, I, I crashed the camera a little bit, but um, this piece here, this, this part, this is also a chip. I don't know exactly for what it is, but it's also getting hot. I think it's kind of, it, it has a kind of cooling already installed on, on top. But um, I think it's kind of a um, voltage regulator or something like that. So we had here the RJ45 ports, uh, power in, the USB ports. On this side, you have only these uh, WPS um, Wi-Fi and LED um, buttons. And on this side, you don't have anything. So what did I do right now? I did I did some testings with that under heavy load. So I connected some Wi-Fi um, devices to it and started to let it run for maybe two or three hours with load. So everything going up uh, from the heat. This one going up to 50, uh, this, this one, this chip is going up to 50 degrees 55 degrees something around about it this one without cooling without active cooling is going to quite 40 degrees as well of this even this going a little bit higher maybe 43 degrees and we have a hot spot here between those two um there are two um kind of units covered in a metal sheet 
and in between you have around 43 degrees coming um another hotspot is this this one as mentioned below uh, before and another hotspot is this so i try to get this one and this one passive cold and what i did with this um ventilator is i um i tried to install this and give it also heavy load for a few for one hour one hour 50 and what i realized with this fan in here this one going down to 33 degrees uh, centigrade this one is also at the same barely at the same uh, temperature this one going a little bit down maybe to um 40 degrees roundabout and we have not there is still a hot spot in here uh, in this area between the two metal sheets but um this one is not uh, getting that hot anymore so the plan is right now i will figure out where the where the connectors are from the usb port here getting the five volts uh, dc out getting this five volt dc um fan connected to these two uh voltage outputs and then i i think this device should be much more stable so what i realized the last four days it's barely happening or at, at least not happening anymore that the router is really out of order and i have to reset it manually so this is something i realized i'm i'm quite sure this is something coming um this is something which uh, is a design flaw of this device, but it's solvable. So um, stay tuned. I will make maybe another video with some thermal imaging results of um, the upgrade or the, the modification to this uh, super nice router. And um, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.